people want the product. They don't want the cheapest product. And uh, the <clears throat> loyalty is huge. The, the shares, when we bought them at least, were much more reasonable in relation to current earnings. Apple didn't have to do a lot better in the future than they were doing at the current time. I can very easily determine the competitive position of Apple now and, and who's trying to chase them and how easy it is to chase them. We happen to be well situated in terms of having these massive home furnishing stores and, and uh, uh, I can learn very easily how consumers react to different things uh, there. Uh, probably easier than I can uh, trying to pick out what's really happening at Amazon at any given time. So you use your research at the, the Nebraska Furniture Mart to to tell you that consumers prefer Apple over Samsung, or I mean, what, what type of thing are you? Well, the interesting thing is if you, if you come in to buy a TV set at the Furniture Mart, a price is extremely important. Now, obviously pictures, there's all those great pictures just sitting up there. So you you can have Samsung, you have all these different uh, ones. And uh, if you put on a sale, uh, and you drop the price of Samsung 10%, we can fill that department with people that come out for it. Uh, you can't move people by price uh, in the smartphone market remotely, like you can move them in appliances or all kinds of things. I mean, people want the product, they don't want the cheapest product. And uh, the <clears throat> loyalty is huge. Now that doesn't mean somebody can't come along with a product that, that just jumps the field in some way, but uh, and then once you have the product, the degree to which it sort of controls your life, I mean, it's a very, very, very valuable product to the people that build their lives around it. And that's true of eight-year-olds and it's true of 80-year-olds. Uh, people who, who have questioned Apple's future have said things like, well, right now people are paying $800 for a smartphone and the other reality in technology is that prices eventually come down and unless you're adding more and more value to that product the price will come down so what happens if people i mean i guess the question is will people always be willing to pay eight hundred dollars or more for a phone or will that wind up being a cost that comes down and down just well, as technology it, it can be that way but usually because there's competition between different pr products and some manufacturer decides that they can't beat say apple on their own terms so they drop a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks some products are very susceptible to that and other products are not. And uh, so far, I mean, you've had smartphones and big differences in price categories and, and people come back in and if they had an Apple before, you're gonna have a much cheaper cell phone uh, selling right next to a smartphone selling right next to it. And they don't look at it. If you have a cheaper TV, that picture's looking at you and, and you say, what, wait, wait a second, what's the difference? Right. <laughs> and you buy the cheaper TV. And, and that's true of, I mean, most items are price sensitive. And it's not to say that uh, an Apple isn't, has somewhat price sensitive. It's very, very, very little. That, but somebody could come along and leapfrog something in the way of the technology and adds some benefits that, uh, that, that would be the more competitive threat to me than price competition. It would be benefit competition. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but then, you know, Apple gave me a whole lot of things that I never realized I needed That's until they the came up with them. <laughs> and somebody else was trying to think of some other things to get me along the same line. Right. Uh, let's, let's talk about just the stock price again. You said that it made sense to you when you started buying into it. Um, shares have appreciated since That's then. the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's always an anchoring problem with, with, with buying stocks. If you get used to buying them at X, it's harder to buy them at higher prices. So does that signify that you've stopped buying an Apple because of where prices have well, come? Well, maybe, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you slid it in there nice. Yeah, so. yeah I've tried. <laughs> um, I, I guess when you see things like the earnings that came out, you had mentioned to us the other day that you weren't bothered or disappointed by the earnings. When you see the stock all. price pull back, you, let, you probably like it at that point. Oh, yeah. I mean, Apple with a non-new product, I think they sold something like 50 million, you know, or that. That's a lot of units to sell at $700. And a lot of those are going to people that are actually replacing a present Apple. Uh, but they do know that a new product's gonna be out in six months or something. And, and you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe they got promised an Apple for their birthday or their graduation, but I would be tempted 
if I were going to buy one, do wait till the new model comes out. I, what, what do I lose by doing it except the use of one in between? Uh, that's a lot of product to sell when, with a new model coming out when you think about 50 million.